Hello everyone, I have some very exciting news. I have been nominated for the Best British Podcast. I'm up against some very big names, so if everybody could take a minute and click the link in my bio and type in James English and place your vote. Thank you for the support and hopefully I can win it. At Collins Morgan, we offer friendly, regulated and ethical advice for anyone living in Scotland. Over the last six years, we have helped thousands of Scottish residents become debt-free. Our organisation always have your best interests at heart, and our advisors are trained to help you in any situation with a range of solutions always available. If you're struggling with debts, act now and call one of our friendly advisors on 0141-218-4450. Then we're on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and today's guest, we've got the Bellator man, Chris Bungard. How are we, brother? Then we're on. We're good. good to see you. Aye. Finally hit the big time, mate. Yeah. Get me on. <laughs> Hope you Paul Ferris. The bad guy, you know what I mean? The baddest guy about here. What's happening, man? Fuck, not a lot, mate. Been First of all, I've been choking to come on here. I know, mate. I've had a, you've had a lot of people wanting to get you on. You tagged up left, right, and centre. The numbers don't lie, man. The numbers don't lie. <laughs> First of all, mate, congratulations on your win. Thank you, mate. Thank Absolutely you. killed it. What was that boy, nine and nine and one his last nine, two weight world champion? Aye, aye. Took aye, him out aye. first round. Aye, army veteran and all that jazz. Mm -hmm. Light work, man. I thought I was. I actually prepared mentally for months and months for a war. You know what I mean? So it was already there. Even before I was fighting him, the name got floated about. I was like, right, let's prepare for him. Because he's good. He's beat hundreds of great guys. And in two minutes, you're like, fuck. That, that, that it, man. That it. Then he breaks away. I actually did not he? Like, the warm-up and the changing room was harder than my actual fight. That's how bad it was. They built up to it. The first Scottish guy. The first Scottish person ever to fight for Bellator. Uh, is that correct? Signed, uh, is it Second. No, second first? or first, aye. Aye, first. That's aye, I'm still amazing. Amazing. How does it feel to be? That was cool, man. Because I always remember like, Rob Whiteford signed for the UFC for Scotland, and he was the first guy to it, like bring the UFC to Scotland. And I was like, that's cool. Even if he doesn't matter how his career goes or down the line, they can always look back. He was the first. So for me to be Bellator, because Bellator and UFC are rivals. People say, "Oh, you got to go to UFC next." It's not like that. It's no. It's not like I'm going to go there after that. They're actually competing against each other, so they're rivals, so that's how big they are as well. So it would be the first Scottish guy to be signed. That was that was pretty sweet, man. That was always something I can look back and... Congratulations. Tell the wins. Never, like, as your old dad, uh, fucking Danny's a bit. <laughs> you never feel short anyway, mate. First round stoppage, absolutely. You came out on fire. Aye. Ah, you, 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 you were underrated going oh, into that definitely. fight? Definitely. I think even when I had his back, I must have thought, this guy's never choked me. And then I just, just rip his fucking head off. <laughs> <laughs> As you do. Kick it right back. <laughs> man, fuck that cunt. <laughs> when, so all the fighting stuff, when did it all begin for you? When did it all start? Oh, fuck. Um, just when I was a wee guy, just jumped about being a dick. I was in school fighting, suspended all the time. But I was still, I wasn't a, I wasn't a bully, but like fights came to me and I would always fight. I wouldn't pick on anybody. I'd usually hit I'd usually bat batter the bullies basically. That's mm -hmm. I was like I was like a, a teenage Dexter, but no killed them, just mm -hmm. just battle them, you know what I mean? But then like I, I love pro wrestling, like fake the fake wrestling as mm -hmm. you just call it. So I used to always watch that and wrestle and fight and like put put people in submissions and stuff like that. And that's where I started, just for there. A wee uh, team in Hollytown, a wee uh, gym, the Kira the Sports Centre. I started doing cage fighting, MMA. So me and my mate got a wee pair of UFC gloves. Just think we were all fucking tickets, not me and away doing. And just it was like grappling, jiu jitsu, and sparring. Just just took it for there. That's how it started. And this is where you are. Nine years ago, man. Not me before. When did you all get the, the kids were watching uh, Conor McGregor and think it was cool? Uh, not uh, me. When did you start taking it more serious? Then oh you? fuck, about a year ago, man. I Th was like constant partying. Taking drugs and just shagging about. No, I just been an idiot, just an absolute idiot. So, about a year ago, two years ago, I lost my job. We all got sacked because I was going to watch Celtic away and training Dublin and all that, just pulling sickies, and I got caught, man. My, <laughs> boy, my boss has brought me in. It was a, a woman. 
And she's like, yeah. I just thought I was getting a slap at this because the guys were taking sickies every day. Uh-huh. And we were, there was a table like this. And I walk in and she's got a folder, man. And I can just see through the A4 bits of paper. It's like, I can see it's like pictures of my Instagram. Me and like, <laughs> I could just see it like me with like three Asian tourists in, in uh, Germany. I'm just like, I just bust it. <laughs> I've got this stupid laugh. It just... I've heard it since school, mm-hmm. man. And she's like, Jink, this is funny. Nervous laugh. And then she goes, puts, puts all these bits of papers at this full table and it's got papers, newspapers. And I felt like I was getting interrogated with the CIA mm-hmm. and I just burst out laughing. It's like, this date you're in Germany with Celtic. This date, the paper, you're doing an England fighting, but you says you're not well, it'd be all fuck. All these days I'd pull sickies, man. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I just like, all right, you got me. <laughs> I thought I was going to have to slap my wrist still because people's done worse. Sure as hell, the next day I worked there for years. Ah, uh, she just the sack me, man. So I was like, fuck my life, sir. But where's my income got it comfy? And, and that was single-handedly the best thing that ever happened to me because I, I went to full-time fighting and I concentrated, knuckled down, arrested, trained twice a day, three times a day like a professional. And for there, I've been on a, on a tear. I think I've only lost one out of my last nine fights and it was a, a fight of the year, close loss, that I thought I won. So that was probably the, the best thing that ever happened to me was losing that job. It was in the steelworks. It was it was a shit job, 95 mm-hmm. fucking dead end number, but it was easy and it was right where I stayed and it was money every week, not mean it's money every week, but it was going nowhere. So you're just floating through life doing that. Just uh, casely, just existing basically. Exactly. Taking the fighting as part time and I know no guys care. Would, I've done that all their life for forty years and mm-hmm. like just the same factory, same routine. I'm like, fuck that. Mm-hmm. No, I mean like now I get to train when I want. Get to travel the world and and it's the best thing I've ever happened. Doing big happen. things yeah. for Holy Town, but your, your circle is very tight. You get good pals. Yeah. You get like Kieran Tierney, Conor <laughs> McGregor, <laughs> Big Paul Craig, UFC fighter. Yeah. That's that's a no bad uh, nice unit you've got there, mate. <laughs> How did the Conor McGregor thing come about? How did you end up good pals with Conor? Um, we was first. I, it was five years ago, uh, I, I mailed John Kavanagh, who's the SBG coach, that's Connor's coach, um, he owns the Dublin um, gym, I just mailed him, like, can I come over for training, I had a fight coming up, and he's like, of course, like, he welcomes all fighters for all over the world to actually go there to train, all different nationalities, it's amazing, and it's some facility in Dublin, uh, and I went over there and, and just trained with a professional team, pro team, and then obviously Connor's just in mixing about, and for there, I've been five years. I've been going there. Um, every fight camp, even in between fights, I'll go over there for like a couple of days or a week. Um, just for training. The guys, my weight over there and at the level they're at, it's just brilliant for me because my gym. We've got good fighters, good amateurs. Paul's a lot of heavyweight, so the size difference. And but there, they're, they're all lightweights and welterweights, like 30, 40 of them on a the mat, professionals. So it's good for me as well. Up my game, and and I love Dublin as well. It's a great country. Great other than it. Oh, it's lovely. It's just all the people are just friendly. Aye, aye, it's just brilliant. Aye, so when you go to call as well for Bellator, did you know that was happening? Were you t- working your way to get a contract? Obviously, that's the big time when you hit Bellator or UFC. Did, was there an incline that you were going to get? Uh, I had a, actually had a contract in for Cage Warriors, which is like the biggest in Europe. Um, Cage Warriors, the biggest Europe uh, promotion. So we had a five fight deal sitting there. Well, we're going to sign it, but. The money was shite, but it was it's still a good platform because it's on BT Sports and it, it's a good stepping stone to the UFC. So we're like, we'll, we'll go for that. So just relaxed. I was actually working on a film uh, set down in Cambridge um, at the time. And my manager, I was in the hotel, my, um, my coach, Brian Gallagher, uh, phoned me like, Bellator's just came in with an offer. And uh, all that. Um, he's all oh, it's good money, blah blah blah, and he's like, um, I'll send you the the contract. Over. He says he's got a give him two days. He says, the the guy says the matchmaker. Um, who's that? Um, so we were not really trusting it until it's in black and white, until it was right in front of us. So I woke up the next day, they, they they emailed me the contract through, and I literally I was in a double bed at Premier in Cambridge. Jumped out my bed like fucking buzzing. Hit the shadow boxing <laughs> and that shit. Shooting shoot, 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 double legs, man. <laughs> honestly, like uh, it was, it was, wasn't an easy, it uh, wasn't a hard choice. Not mean like signed it right there and then sit and just sent it over. So it was life changing money. Like it was enough money so I can make a living. Actual make a living out of fighting. A wee bit of comfort because when I was working the steelworks, like I had no money. Like I had a car. And I had no money to put 
petrol in my motor that I was walking to work and people were like, where's your motor? I'm like, oh, it's broke, but it wasn't. I was just embarrassed to say I didn't have any money to put fucking petrol sure. in it, you know what I mean? So that to there and now, I'm, I'm still not loaded, but I've got a wee bit of breathing space. I can, mm-hmm. it's just comfort. That's all you want. You know why be flashy in this guy. I've got, all, got this more, I've got that. You just want a wee bit of comfort where you're not worrying how you're going to pay your bills and Aye. stuff like that, you know what I mean? Which is a, the main factor. Everything we're striving for, everything we're grinding for and working for is for a wee bit of freedom Aye. to be able to do things exactly. with your life and able to enjoy it and not get up and worry and no walking about to work and telling lies because you're embarrassed, Aye. you're ashamed. But the strides you're taking, mate, is, is phenomenal. And people say, like, uh, money doesn't buy you happiness. Well, that's bullshit. Because mm-hmm. I've not had money and I've been sad and depressed and I've had money and I've had a smile on my face because mm-hmm. I'm getting today. Just like, nice wee stupid things like go for food or just anything, man. Just anything. Because so you're working on your dreams as well. So you're getting paid for, you're probably sometimes getting paid for something that you love. It's sometimes you can go to pinch yourself to go, is this fucking real? I know. Do you know I what know. I mean? It's, it's brilliant. To my mates sometimes go to their job and they hate it. Like, um, I think it was like Richard Ashcroft always says, like, you go to a job on a Monday for a wash you despise, for a, a job you despise, like you're a slave mm-hmm. to money, then you die for of a bit of sweet symphony. And I always, I love that fucking quote, mm-hmm. he says it at the start of Glastonbury or something before they played the song, and I'm like, that's that, like, why go to a job every day you're waking up and you're already in that negative mind frame of, I hate this place, I hate my life, where go and do what you want to do, like, put the work in and, like, I'm loving proof of it. It can, it can work out. It can like be done. Fucking but it's fear. S- sunshine Everybody's controlled with a bit of fear. Yeah. What about your next fight? Have they conf- they've confirmed anything? Are you getting that sorted? No doubt about they, a they big name. They put a post on their Instagram um, that I'm ready to step back in the cage. So that's the, them saying mm-hmm. that. So they obviously know how I feel. Mm-hmm. But um, there's a show in Birmingham in May. But fuck Birmingham. I don't like that place. Um, there's a show in London in June in Wembley. I don't even like fucking London either. But I, <laughs> I'd rather fight in London than Birmingham. <laughs> So maybe maybe June in uh, London. You know um, you're going to get a big fucking name, but don't you? Aye, you fuck know, him. Exactly. <laughs> I'm London, I mean, I'll <laughs> smash it in the park, man. <laughs> no, I mean, see if you, uh, they're always like we've all got our, we've all got our problems and our issues, but I think to go into a cage and enjoy crushing people's skulls with your elbows, mm. you've got to know. Like, got yeah, you know that. So and I enjoy that. Mm-hmm. Like, I, see, when I talk about fighting. I smile, you know, I'm mm-hmm. like, ah, this guy's a bit of a crackpot, mm-hmm. man, but, so I can't wait to fight, like, after the last one, the, the amount of media and attention that I got, I think it was because it was on Channel 5, National Telly, the world can watch, well, the, the Britain can watch for nothing, I mean, you don't need to pay for BT Sports, Box Office or Sky, Channel Five's a big audience for me, so mm-hmm. I'm happy to find Channel 5 all the time then, if everybody can see it, you know what I mean, so that can only put my put my profile up but I get some people maybe not like me but I'm not here to please everybody exactly when you're, you're a fighter mate nobody's gonna like you <laughs> no matter what we fucking do good or bad mate it's um it's a lot of jealous negative of course there, mate and and I, the, and but that's when you know you're becoming successful right. the more people the more hate becomes your way you're, you're, alright I'm rising up the ladder here <laughs> how you been dealing with that tension because you've been on BBC Sport you've been everywhere you've been popping up everywhere right. all I love social it. media I love, that, man. I, love, I love talking to people telling them my story and if I can plug a message to anybody out there, then it's fucking brilliant, you know what I mean? But um, I love interviews, I love doing the, the media, I love doing podcasts. Because um, you've your own podcast? Aye. The bad part the bad of podcasts. Podcast. Podcast, there's a lot of bad part of it. <laughs> <laughs> me anyway. But check it out, man, it's brilliant. Aye. A couple of my good pals on it, D Maxwell, Gary Falls, a couple of good people, man. I'm on it, man. I definitely am on it, mate. Definitely. I'm on it. It's, yeah. um, Stuff it, like that, that, that helps me... Like talk as well, cause mm-hmm. like you need to be able to speak in that of game, and uh, I'm I'm going into a wee bit of pro wrestling as well, so that's something else you need to really cut promos and be able to talk right in the mic. So it's all like building my profile to who I'm and stuff. To like become but. a wee bit more professional in it, because we're brought up for fucking rough areas. We don't know how to speak <laughs> properly. I, I'm doing an interview is not now. When I speak, sometimes I. I, I cringe inside. <laughs> I really do because my pals who know me know. Go right, wait a minute, you're a you're a fucking attic here. But I just need to be more professional and to hit a bigger audience as well. I need people to understand what I'm saying instead of giving it. Ah, you fucking. Aye, know aye. what I mean? And just calm it down a bit. And because so, the, the bigger the audience, mate, aye. the more doors it opens for us. Do you, you know, know what I mean? To go further afield, and, and you know exactly where you're going. You know, you found your path, and this is where 
you stick at it and just fucking take right over but I've got every bit of faith in you Cheers, man, man I appreciate it man I was surprised when I watched your first fight because I was like that. I didn't realise how good you were I'm going to be honest with you you just I don't think absolutely did. They fucking smoked that guy and he looked double he looked a, a monster Aye. he looked a monster I threw him about like an old Aye. squid book <laughs> I watched a video I watched a couple of videos at the weekend and there was one I think you were fucking you jumped in a guy like a pair of scissors your legs wrapped around his neck uh, it's a f uh, flying triangle I was solution. like is that illegal is that illegal <laughs> so you'd be in Amsterdam for fucking 100 euros or something <laughs> <laughs> but no aye, that's that's like part of my game as well people think I'm a grinder I just take wrestle down elbows ground and pound but I can fly through the air doing submissions like people, mm. not a lot of people can do that or even try that and that's the stuff I try I try and like Bring something different every time. So when the fans are coming to watch me, like wonder what he's got to do tonight. Like wonder what he's got to say. So entertaining as well. Aye, you're bringing a show to it. Aye, definitely. You're no short uh, winding people up. Aye. Social media, <laughs> short the short mob. You're uh, you're, you're, giving them, you're giving them a. Tight is it's, it's back and forth. What's the what's the script we're at with the boy Aaron for George the show? He just came into my game uh, when he fair do he brings something to the table. Right, he's like a known star, but. Um, he was just thought he was he was a fighter when he wasn't a fighter. He was they were feeding him guys that couldn't throw a punch, and then everybody's like, oh, "This guy's the real deal," and he wasn't the real deal. So I just wanted to um, give him a wee reality check and welcome to the real work, my real sport. Um, but somebody they brought a hillbilly in, and uh, he smashed him. So I don't need to do that. But I went back and forth, and then his wee bitches pals got, got involved and all that. And then when I seen him, um, Scotty T ran, so he actually ran away from me. When after my fight in Newcastle, I see there. Uh, I was like, "Oh, you!" He looked down. <laughs> Couldn't see him for dust, man. On the toes. Yeah, uh, I think he was out his box anyway. So <laughs> probably, probably better I didn't smash him. <laughs> See when I actually jumped out the cage. That's who I was looking for. Scotty T. So was it's that? probably good that I didn't see him. He called me a nonce on that on Twitter. Like, oh, call me a nonce. You call me a nonce. Uh -huh. Um. So probably good that I didn't see him at the time when I jumped the cage because I could probably lose my job. You know what I mean? Just fly kicking him like Khabib style, right? And Adrenaline pumping. Aye, you don't take any shit. It doesn't matter where you're. But drinking that's something you need. Drinking that's something you need to learn to control. Or drink that's just part of you. Oh, definitely. Because every time somebody writes a negative comment, I'm like, "Fucking, where's he for?" <laughs> like, fucking boom. Like, see what Jane Sam Bob with the kind of look up everybody mm -hmm. at the end. It's fucking mm -hmm. dissed them. And that's why I'm like, "Where's he for? Who's he know?" Like, do you know this guy? Who's he fucking just call me a mug? <laughs> that's um, that's when you know you become successful Aye. because. It's going to come tenfold. It's going to get worse for you. I used to be like a bit. It is calm down. You're going to get so used to it and realise it's people we want to follow or any uh, subscribers on you. It's it's just nobody's. Just aye, you know it's mean? just aye. nobody's who. It's prob you probably know the person. Aye. They probably speak to you aye. in the street. Aye. Say hi, Ian. It's, fucking ask for a photo. Aye, they're the fish. biggest shag bags and cowards in the world. And I will always say it, it's that if you're man enough, then make up the real profile. Show me who you are. Yeah. But then the best thing. Who was it? I had on. Somebody says when they get negative comments, oh, a big guy, Shinny, it was on my show last week. He says when it's a negative comment, he just writes, I'm going to love you to love yourself. Yeah. I just shoots it right down yeah. straight away, mate. So it's just a case of you, you will get used to it. It's hard because we all want to be liked, don't we? We all uh, want to be loved. Know, but you're Scottish, mate, so you're going to get England hating you, fucking. It's just the way it is, uh, mate. No I matter don't how mind you with the English. It's, it's maybe your home man's like Scotland. But I think because I'm out there, be like, I'm a big Celtic fan, mm -hmm. so I'm already there with that. So you're always got to get the other half. Of eight. course, why don't you smash it? And I'm all right with that. I'm all right with that. Because your pals are good pals with Kieran Tierney. Aye, have you been pals for a while? Um, a couple of years anyway. Um, he you used to come watch the football team. I used to always play against a bullfrog who I now mm -hmm. play for, and uh, it was like back and forth. And then we just we spoke on to it one time about a fight I had coming up, and they came here. And then ever since then, I've just been pals. Good guy, man. Ah, he's a really things. good guy. He's a really nice guy. Well, yeah, guy's a man. Nice. I've seen, aye. He's good with the, like, I was standing there all day and queues, like Nando's or whatever, just take pictures with fans. Aye. He's he's, mm -hmm. he's like a man of the people I call him. Which is good because yeah. people, people you know yourself, can get above their station as well and then before you know it, they think they're above aye. everybody else but you've got to remember where you started. That's definitely know him. He's just like me and you, man. Mm -hmm. He's just talking. He's new to his day, he's aye. not aye. mean. Uh, the old toy but uh, <laughs> uh, he's just like us so hopefully yeah, I don't think he'll ever change it's just, mm -hmm. it's just one of the guys good but and Anne Ribbon go to give you Anne uh, a shout out <laughs> Chrissy's house love the place oh, Annie's fucking doing crackers doing wonders we're crackers but they're changing lives yeah. they're changing lives and I don't think they're getting the recognition that they deserve people are starting to know more about them now yeah, but 
I think what they're doing for people who's got suicidal thoughts and people who's lost people to suicide, are, they're saving lives every day. It's unbelievable what they're doing and what they're achieving. And we've got a walk, walk for hope, hope for, walk, walk of life, walk of life. Is it walk into the light or something? Walk into the light. Aye, so it's a it's a walk. Check out Chris's house uh, website. I think it's. 11 for me I'm not too sure but look at Chris's house it's 4 in the morning walk I think you start the walk when it's dark so you're kind of walking up and the sunrise is like for every dark day there's always going to be a bright, yeah. light, a bright day or, so it's just check them out they're massive and brilliant yeah, aye. how do you end up involved with them? it was through uh, one of my best friends Liam Fagan um, you've met Liam at uh, the Andy did. Circles and stuff so um, we started in a, a, a Suicide Awareness Day in Hollytown. It's like a charity day, football tournament during the day, and then like a, a nighttime raffle and bands and stuff like that. Three years ago, this will be the third year in uh, June, or July, sorry. Um, Liam's father committed suicide, and I know a couple of my friends' fathers have done it. So it's close to our tight circle of, of friends or teammates. So we just started to raise awareness, and um, we done Paul Fagan Memorial Cup, which is Liam's dad, uh, on that day, and we done the charity night. So we just we started raising money, and then first year we raised like nine nine thousand, and then the second year we done like a charity holiday. We like raffled a charity a holiday we, two weeks in Greece, stuff like that. And then we think we raised something like twenty three grand. So we went for nine grand our first year to twenty three last year. So this year, so I don't think we'll ever beat the second year because that was amazing. So um, third year is this is our third year. So just for then and. As a community in Hollywood and run about it as well, everybody just chips in. It's, it's unbelievable. The days it's absolutely cracking a day. The first year it, it was pure sunny, and then the second year it was pure hailstones. So it was two different uh, weather wise, but it's just all for a great cause, obviously. And um, Liam Fagan like puts a lot, puts his a lot of time and effort in it. More than we all do our bit, but it's it's really in his heart. Uh, so he's he's really our main our main, which is good because. It affects everybody, and we've all got mental health issues, whether we like to believe it or no. Oh, we've all got some sort of problems that we're too ashamed to speak about, or too proud to admit. But the work these are doing, you're all, you're always promoting Chris's house, including definitely. myself. It's just they're a non-funded organisation who's just trying to help people and and do it naturally without any medication, without yeah. any of the bullshit, and and it's working for them. They're doing it. I think they only want something twenty four seven in it in the UK mate. or Scotland or whatever, which is amazing. Uh -huh. Like. Because usually these thoughts, I'm not saying, well, I've had some thoughts in the, in the past and that, but it's early hours in the morning, you may be up having a few lines or you, mm -hmm. you feel it with a girlfriend, you pick up the phone, yeah, they're there, they're not mean. Mm -hmm. So like, you need to applaud all the work we do. And that's what I'm saying. If I can put that on my fight shorts or my cage banner and speak about it on like Channel 5, just say, mm -hmm. that, using that platform to get it out there, then I'll do that. I'll They'll do that. Job because can, that help a person, person can might see that and yeah. you, you've saved a life and, and you'd be surprised the amount of people even sp us speaking about it now the people who are watching it, it shed some light to realise that you're not you're not alone and I know that phrase is uh, it's okay to be no, oh, is it okay not to be okay mm -hmm. it's not yeah. okay to be okay what is that it's, it's okay to be not okay it's, no, it's okay to be not okay but I kind of want to break that stigma because people can change their life they can change the mindset and it is, you, we're going to have our moments, but you don't need to stay there. Yeah. You don't need to stay there. And you, you, people at Chris's house are changing people's mindsets through a thing called Havening, which I got done a few weeks ago, and um, Reiki and just speaking to people. And Andy yeah. McClan does his thing with his meetings on a Wednesday night for anybody with yeah, drug addiction man. or mental health, and then going on a Wednesday night, six o'clock to seven. Andy's and they're going walks on a Sunday. Andy's brilliant. Yeah. Andy's amazing. He's doing massive things. He's come through it. And we're speaking for experience. Yeah, Chris, do you know exactly. what I mean? We're speaking for fucking misery, but we're also speaking through we're starting to become successful, yeah. including myself in this show. Yourself is better yeah. torn, you're we're, we're becoming meh, role models, mate. I, yeah. I, I, people a lot of people ask me for advice, mate. And I, I still see myself as fucking daft, James. Uh, I still see myself I'm as same, and, uh, I don't understand I don't understand it. When people say oh, it's weird when people are starting to say, Oh, I'm watching your stuff, it's brilliant. I, I get embarrassed. Yeah. But I'll say a dick answer because I'm embarrassed. Yeah, and yeah, I'll, yeah. Instead of going, Thanks, I'll go, I can know and <laughs> I'll make a dick it instead <laughs> of just accepting it. But because we feel as if I don't feel as if I deserve it as well. Do you know what I mean? It's weird the way I think. Mm -hmm. But we just need to keep churning it out and, and doing what we're doing. What about for how about the industry like and Bellator, are they good to you? They treat you well? Aye, well, that was my first experience with them. Um, they, they've 
took me down a week before the fight, put me up in a fancy hotel for a week, gave me spending money, and they pay me well. So <laughs> if they could keep doing that, then <laughs> we'll be fucking tight. Not <laughs> How long do you see? Because you're 30 now. 30? Aye, aye. How long do you see yourself doing it? As long, five years? Five like? years, no, five aye. year, man, six years. I know fighters are at 42, they're still doing still that, fucking mean, mass. Like Anderson Silva and uh, Daniel Cormier, like two of mm. the best ever, like, they're still fighting now, man, you mm. know what I mean? So... But no, I just want to make enough money, uh, buy a nice house. That's what I'm looking at now. I'm looking at just a nice house. Doesn't need to be daft, one of these new build things for half a quarter of a mil. Not mean pools and fun. Uh, yeah, but nice if I was. I went to ride that for a mil, don't get me wrong, but I'll stick with the jacuzzi bar yeah. for now. But um, I just want to build a house. Uh, build a house, fuck's sake, Bobby Builder here. <laughs> uh, I just want to buy a house. Buy a house <laughs> for the future. So with my, with my fight money, deposit, start paying the mortgage, whatever. And that can just, that's for the future, not me, that's for your wife, your wings, mm-hmm. etc. So that's what I want in my fight career and traveling the world, which I'm already doing. But you're, you're doing it, mm-hmm. you're living it now, mate, and oh, you can look into these things. And this is the, the this is the journey, mate. Yeah. This is what we're doing, we're fucking living, we're doing things, mate. We're making strides, mate. And everybody, grafters, you're mate, mate, that's aye, everybody you're grafters. making the woods of black. <laughs> they'll start feeling proud, even though, even I, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of people who used to speak bad about me saying when people ask about me, they go, oh, I know him now, and that's all right. <laughs> and that. and people, everybody wants to be your pal now. Oh, Do you know right. what I mean? You know, but look, the you're ones I don't know what to talk to you then to see in the club like that. Oh, 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 I get a phone with you. No, <laughs> get yourself a fuck. I was in a fucking, I was in Celtic Park the weekend and the toilet's doing a piss, man. Honestly, dick out. Guys just like that, man, with a selfie. Like, Come <laughs> on, man. <laughs> Let me put the wall not with him, <laughs> what I mean, fuck's sake. Because you, you done the half, did you half time draw, you done? I did that. Uh, that was good. That right? was mad. That was, I was more nervous for that in a fight. Mm-hmm. No joke, because I'd been in the tunnel and all that, and the guys gave me a big entry and all that. They know my, my titles. He is a lightweight champion for this promo. I'm just mm. like, Jesus. You know, I was expecting the disco lights to come on. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that, again, that could be happening that, you could get that at fucking the hydro. No, you could be walking up I'm to got, fifteen. Got to get it down the hydro, definitely. They're, they're into it. They like me. The belt or brasses all love me. They're like, mm-hmm. I think we've got a star here. And I'm like, you're fucking right, man. Get yeah. me out of America. Get it in hydro. And you heard the noise at, at Newcastle. And fucking, I know it's just down the road, man. But doesn't matter. I know, doesn't matter, mate. <laughs> fuck's sake, don't uh, disclaim it, mate. It's massive. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And people, it's funny because people love the Scottish. They love the Scottish, even big Paul Craig at UFC. They love the face paint and the the kilts. Aye, they love all that aye. fucking madness. And when you're speaking, the cunt, I think the cunt Ganny stays down over the top of half of these. Like, ah, that's fucking nutcase, that's boy. <laughs> <laughs> so he was, he's shouting in the ring all that, and he's like, ah, when fuck? you hear your, you know yourself when you hear your, you talking on an interview, like that Scottish way, like aye. you can hear like, even the Irish and like American, like. No, oh, you can understand them on the sound good, but see when you hear a Scottish interview, you're like, that sounds horrible, I man. Know, mate, you didn't <laughs> you? Fucking hell, man. But, aye. but at least you're doing it, mate. Channel 5 family to watch and everything, because I know you had a few people can do it if you can watch you and on Newcastle. You've got a good following. And it's only going to get bigger. I know. They, they go everywhere and it's madness because it's a dear day out, you know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. like your ticket, your bus, your train. Hotel. Fucking. You're all sorts. <laughs> <laughs> You're licorice all sorts. <laughs> so that's a day out. And not just that, they're out for days, you know what I mean? So, I like, they're always the loudest in the room and all. Like, no matter how many they are, they're always the fucking loudest. So, I man, I love them all. Everyone. Is anybody come through the ranks in there? Any boys you're training with? Or I like, face anybody doing well? Well, Matt, we just had guys fighting last week and on top and the week before uh, doing in Wales and Cage Wars. And they're my main sparring partners, but they're, they're amateurs still, like Jordan, Michael Blair, Ryan, Gary, they, they're all amateurs, but they're all with my ass, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, they're doing something right, uh-huh. and they're winning their amateur fights, so, guys at them, they're, they're the ones I would look out for through Scottish Hit Squad, um, but aye, it's, it's good, because they're all young, we've got a young Kyle who's 15 and one on Sunday there, we had like 10 second knockout, 15 year old man, I mean, I'm, I'm double his age, uh-huh. and this guy's an absolute beast. He's still to grow up, man. And, uh, He'll be looking up to you. Uh, He'll skill, be his role model. His skill set is unbelievable at that age. I mean, I was I was in bushes trying to find sticky pornos at 15. <laughs> I wasn't <laughs> fucking in a, kid, in, in a gym learning. So, uh-huh. fair play, man. Like, but the sport's just evolving. Like, for when I first started nine years ago, it was, it was nobody knew what it was. Now everybody's doing it and everybody's good everywhere. You're grappling, you're striking, you're wrestling, you're conditioned. Everywhere, everybody's training everything. So, they're good all round so it's weird I know when you get into these gyms the, the people who can fight like fuck they're nice people 
Mm-hmm. They're aye. content, they're quite, they're mellow aye. because they've nothing to prove. Mm-hmm. If you get into a pub and watch the Celtic Rangers game, you've got all these fucking beer bellies and guys who hate their life just pretending to be aye. tickets. Just shouting at the telly. Just shouting at the telly, watching other people live their You'll dreams. Get this wee quiet, curly dick, mm-hmm. specky guy mm-hmm. with a backpack that would fucking aye, turn into a pretzel, aye, man. Pair of Converse <laughs> on and just no giving a fuck because aye. there's no ego. But that's where the Jiu Jitsu comes in and all the training, it kind of aye, disciplines aye. you. How's your, how's your discipline been since? Your belly top fight, have you knuckled down? Have you had a couple of nights out? Um, I've, I've had a couple of nights out. I went to uh, Benidorm f- for the Celtic game and then I went to see Bill Bourne in Glasgow. Um, but I've injured my back the last couple of weeks, so I've just been eating shit, been lazy. And I'm out, I'm out with the boys on Saturday for like an odd day. Hang. I've and not then, seen them since my fight, so I don't know. So that, that should be Good, interesting. But then after that, if you get the fight date sorted, then oh, it's aye, a case of definitely. knuckled down again. How is your discipline? How is it? it must be good if you're... I when I'm when I've got a fight camp, camp aye, it's it's totally changed now. Like I don't even go to the door. Um my diet's perfect, um no no shite, no alcohol, nothing. So. You cut weight fast, did you know? Because you you cut weight you uh, fucking left it at the two, last two and a half stone I cut in um a couple of weeks. Uh, it was weird. It was a <laughs> fucking tight one, wasn't it? How did you lose that fast? Um so I, I just I walk about eighty four kilo. Um, naturally aye uh, and I cut my, my fight weight 70 so that's two or two stone I cut but I, when I diet down cut all the shit out a couple of weeks it goes down to like 77 come fight week I'm 77 so then I do a thing called water loading I drink a lot of water gallons of water flushes out my body and then it comes to the last I cut all my carbs out fight week no carbs at all man so mm-hmm. as the week gets closer and closer to weigh in your body's weak as fuck right you have no carbs in you, you have no energy. And then I do a thing called salt baths, where I put Epsom salts into a roasting hot bath, scalding bath, and go in it. This is, remember, you're dehydrated for a day, and it's draining the water, draining the water out of you, and you sit under covers for 20 minutes, and do a couple of baths, and you sit in a sauna, remember, ne- never had a drink or eat in over 24 hours. Dehydrated, it's fucking horrible, it is horrible, but... We get there, we always get there. People can die. Aye, people I've seen die. people in the saunas be on a bike. Towels with them. Aye, For a new tours, people getting dragged out. It's madness. What we How do. does that affect you, though? You're into fight night. Are you no fucking drained? No, because they've changed the weigh-ins now. So I can weigh in early hours, Friday morning, nine o'clock in the morning. And then I don't fight till Saturday night. So mm-hmm. I get like a day and a half to rehydrate, refuel. But you're still not there. Like, you're still... You feel you're, you know, uh-huh. you're, no, you're not right. But you get all that first thing you do is water so just rehydrate so your gallons and gallons of water back into your body so you you put all that water weight back on so I'll weigh in at 70 and the time I fight the next night I'm my way back up at 78 79 so I have 9 no, kilos uh, on I just water yeah so uh, but how does people know go in try and be the weight instead of being because you got all these killers cutting down for fucking 90 and 100 and putting on a stone and a uh, half two stone so, that night so next day so I it 84 which is middleweight that's what I walk about mm-hmm. eh? I cut down by welterweight mm-hmm. to get to lightweight and I would get these killers cutting down for like, he- like uh, heavyweight to get to middleweight mm-hmm. so they would just be massive uh-huh. so it's just the way they do it I wish I would stop it because it's dangerous isn't it because you cut it fine could you not cut down to 70 like a week before or, but, nah is it just, uh, just not the way, way I eat no not the way I eat because uh, you, you, you're floating I was like you post a photo on Instagram and you say you cut that way I don't, I don't think he's going to fucking uh, make it no, it was I always did it, but it is tough. I've got a process, and I've been, I've had thirty one fights, so I know how to do mm-hmm. it now. So I've got to do a tea. What's the feeling like then? So you're no a hundred percent there when you're you're re- refueled the next uh, day. Aye, you just you just your body because you've you've zapped all this weight off you and put mm-hmm. it right back on like that. It was, it's just a weird feeling in your body, like you know what there, but it's, it is definitely dangerous because you're you're taking the water out your brain as well. So. That's why people get knocked out dead easily in fights that cut a lot of weight because when you get, take a shot, your brain's just mm-hmm. moving. So it's just it's dangerous, man. It's not nice. What's the goal for you then in Bellator? What's the plans for you? Um, what do you see yourself in the future? World champion? I will. The, the actual champion, like, tweeted me uh, two days ago. Seen it. It's, uh, Seen Michael it. Chandler. So he knows my name. Mm-hmm. So but that guy's a beast. I'm not going to fucking lie. Uh, that guy's an animal, but I think he's a... He's a juice monkey. You know I mean, he's a <laughs> steroid abuser. <laughs> uh, so if you see my name and now, he's like, oh, if you get a couple of wins, then uh, we'll see him down the line. You know what I mean, I, I do need a couple of wins. I've just had my first one. Um, so see how the game is next. I'd like an American fighter, but I think they maybe keep me in the European, UK 
ones you know and then just take it from there but I like I'm no I, I don't dare us to be world champion like people say I want to be number one mm. never be my goal is to be, be number one I know I can fight I know how tough I'm I just I'm just on a journey just enjoying journey and being happy and getting a laugh man enjoying the moment <laughs> I like enjoy the limelight now because it's not going to last long. Aye, I'll, it's like if, if you say about football players, I know it's a short career, uh -huh. and you could play like for twenty years, and it's a short career. Uh -huh. So, fine's just the same. Like, just make memories, enjoy the journey, meet new people, get a laugh, get a laugh. Your mates share that with your mates, and travel the world, and just have stories to tell your mates. Hopefully, funny ones, and no depressing. Exactly, about it. That's, that's what it's all about. To enjoy the present moment, and if then by kings to enjoy it because. We can concentrate on the finishing line. Yeah. And you look at guys like Tyson Fury, they create that, I want to be world champion, I want to be number one, which is great, because mm -hmm. I want to be this podcast to be number one. But when you people get there, when they hit that goal, they still feel as if, is that it? Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. Because they've not enjoyed the journey, they've not enjoyed the process of doing it. Yeah. And it's difficult because I think it's the right way of thinking as well to just enjoy it. Because you never know what's on the corner. Yeah, no. Same as football players, anybody, that it, things fizzle out, but it's down to us to have something to fall back on and have something else to work on and exactly. keep creating because it's only us that can make ourselves happy no can't else exactly, man. do you know what I mean so it's, it's good man it's, 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 it's a good time mate for Scottish people and I know we speak a lot and people we're, we're comed dangerous. comedian pals we're making moves mate we're and it's funny how everybody kind of comes into your life innit and we're all trying to we're all trying to achieve we're all trying to achieve things and, we're, and Actions speak louder than words, and I always say it. We're doing it. We're putting yeah. it into action. We're putting it into action. What we're doing, and it's good. So hopefully, you get a fight soon. When do you think you'll get? Do you think we'll chat with Dawson? June, hopefully June, June, uh, London. Wembley. I would like that's that. what you want, isn't it? Aye, fuck it. Why not? Give me your best again. Nice. Right? <laughs> Have you got anybody in your sights? No, I have not. Like, not the important. Anybody? Like, uh, American? I'd like an American fighter. Somebody got, I thought people for every fucking country you could think of apart from America. Mm -hmm. So they're apparently the best. So bring them here. It's an American company. Bring them here. Or anybody just just mail me, fuck's sake, Bill. <laughs> me. Just drop me a message, Tell man. Me a fucking message. Jude, I'll be Jude, coming to your on door. the phone, Jude. Paul Ferris will be coming to your door. <laughs> <laughs> I've got contacts. <laughs> Jimmy Boy will sort that out. He's <laughs> a... Uh, I know the future's looking good for you, mate. I'm proud of you. And well, you're doing, you're doing brilliant, and you always set it out the last couple of years, and, and things are paying off for you. And you're doing it. You're doing it, mate. Is um, your injury? Is that going to be all right? Or is that just a wee niggle? No, it's just, that sorted? just a wee. It's like a trap muscle in my back. It's like in between my ribs and all on the side. But it's been seeing it always. My back always goes all the mm. time, right? But it's here for a couple of days, and then I go on mate. So, but this time it's been out a week, and it's been fucking really agony. Uh -huh. It is starting to get a wee bit better for yesterday, but I should be alright. I'm going to take some classes tonight, help the beginners out. Don't do them too much, but um, hopefully get back to train next week. You see yourself where you're in, Jim? Um, well, I did coach the beginners' classes and some mm. classes and I, I did PT people, but I don't know. Um, maybe maybe in the future, uh, a wee branch off hit squad oh, like... Aye. Hollytown hit squad. <laughs> <laughs> Anything's doable for you, mate. Uh, is, um, aye, why not? Yeah. Getting people on board. And how can people get involved in if you're doing your PT or anything? Can people get involved? How can I get in contact with you? Just just message my page, uh, Bungard, uh, Facebook page or Instagram, Kyle Bungard, Twitter, Kyle Bungard. Or just come to the hit squad gym. I'm always in there and Cope Bridge with what. And then, like, can be pad work, can be working your wrestling, can be work uh, jiu jitsu, we bit of sparring, we bit of striking, stuff like that. So it's just oh. all round. Um, I think by the end of my career, I'd love to be like a black belt. I'm close to my brown belt now in jiu jitsu. So it'd be good if I was going to start my gym, maybe I'll have a, be a black belt yeah. in jiu jitsu, have all the MMA experience, binders, stuff like that. So, what did I say to get a black belt in jiu jitsu 10 years? Aye, yeah, don't know about that. My coaches are black belts and that. And uh, so, so you're two away now? Aye, just that I'm close to my brown belt, so... The belts don't really matter in the gym, but it would be cool to have the black of course. belt, you know I mean? So it's that way, two years? Aye, uh, a couple of years away anyway. Aye, ah, you want the black belt, nah. don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking wear it on your smash head. Smash blind first, but I don't get us having it Or Marcus. No, but everything you're doing, you're working towards it. Sometimes yeah. when we actually live the dream, it's... 
It doesn't feel as good because we're doing it. Yeah, but then when you actually take a wee step back sometimes and have a wee break and you go, fuck me, man, this is brilliant. Yeah. Even when you're injured, if you're in your bed eating shite, you go, you feel good, uh, don't you? You feel, you feel good. After that fight, it was like, because you've all that, because that's what, I think that's why I went mental. Like, I've, I've said this before, and I was jumping about like a fanny, because see, before I went out, I've, I've never done it in my life, but before I went out, I was fine for the day before, the day of, but I was really thinking about my fight before I made the walk, I had my flag, and I just had a wee bit of doubt, just creeped in, a wee mm-hmm. bit of doubt of losing, because uh, of the guys he'd fought, and um, that just creeped in there, and I think that's when, when I won, that's why I went mental, like, because I doubted myself mm-hmm. when I was fucking raging, because I knew how good it was, I was up against it a wee bit, and I was like, oh, maybe I could lose this fight, mm-hmm. and I'm like, fuck, why did you just creep uh, in here yeah, just yeah. before I make the mm-hmm. walk, so... Like after the fight, after it's all done, all the training's done, you're just sitting, relaxing, like oh, it's just done it. the pressure's uh-huh. just off. Uh-huh. You're eating shit. You're going we 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 holidays here and there. Mm. You're just like oh, I've done it. I've just mm. fought. Like that's me for another couple uh-huh. of months. I don't even want to put all that shit. But now it's coming back up again. Like, like who's got to be next? Uh-huh. And now it's got to be like fucking switching on to being a maniac. Again. The seed that out, mate. It's always going to kick in. Aye. But it's how you transfer that D- and take focus. Kills, that, of course, and it's it can be healthy because it. If you're getting there too confident, too cocky, mm. and you've seen these guys in the ring, they're getting all these big swings, and you've seen them getting knocked back yeah, fucking yeah. out. I think the we see that out to go. Oh, Maybe I, that's I, what keep fucking me, help me. Right I right, keep me in my toes because I need to switch on yeah, here yeah. because as a, a guy, as a monster, you yeah, were yeah. against. His, he was no fucking mug, but you done yourself proud. And see him, you're out. There's people ever try to test you because they know you're a fighter. Oh, well, I did the door. I'm a door. Uh-huh. <laughs> my door. My doorman and mother and squish. Mm-hmm. Um, so you've got a license to not fuck out people then? <laughs> <laughs> no, people usually just ask for pictures and that. Uh-huh. Right? So, um, nah, it's actually not too bad. No, no, yeah. One guy that actually cracked me one time. Um, I chucked him out and we turned back. I turned back to go back in and he ran back in the car and just scud at me a belter, man. Right there, right? Closed on my ear. I, I, I stood my feet, man. I took it like a champ, but... Mm-hmm. And he just bolted. it. Um, so that's the only trouble I've ever had in the Touch door. Them. I know. But, uh, well, hopefully things move but, forward for you. Did send me a message after uh-huh. it. Uh, I apologise. Find out who you are. Uh, mm-hmm. Send me a wee donation. <laughs> <laughs> Twenty six needs more. <laughs> no, but yeah, Chrissy, you're then fucking brilliant, mate. Cheers, you're you're on the path for greatness in this battle. You're you're there for doing big things, and your first fight is clearly stated that. And I wish you all the best for the future. Cheers, Everything you're doing. Appreciate it. Good luck. Appreciate Thanks for time. coming on, oh, brother. My pleasure. Thank Excellent, you very much. Mate. Cheers. Thank you. Legend. Boom. For all your fire safety requirements, fire alarms, fire extinguishers, fire risk assessment, fire doors, and also CCTV, fire suppression have your safety as their main priority. For inquiries, you can contact them on 01698 200562 or email on info at scotland.org At Select Blinds, if you want to find something unique, then Select Blinds is a place for you. They take pride in their ability to manufacture blinds to order, using a range of materials and fabrics. They can take your needs, specifications and instructions to use them to create blinds of any colour or style. If you're looking for something that you've seen in a catalogue, then they keep a range of popular blinds in stock, each of which can be modified and sized to fit your windows perfectly. Whatever they're looking for, an individual item or something that's off the shelf, Select Blinds will give you that ideal choice. When you make a purchase at Select Blinds, the delivery and fitting is also free of charge. So for inquiries for Select Blinds, give them a call on 01236 443 636. Or drop them a message on Facebook page, select blinds and shutters. AM Events are specialists in party wedding and event planning management. They offer services from full event planning and management right down to the standalone venue dressing. AM Events strive for 100% customer satisfaction every time from email updates and how about the planning is going, managing the day of the event. They will support you the whole way through. So for more information, to make a booking, Pop down to their showroom at Unit 2, Foundry Street, Atlas Industrial Estate in Glasgow. Their phone number is 0141 237 3020. So pop along or else their social media pages are on Facebook, AM Events 
and also Instagram at amyevents.glasgow.